Hi everyone, welcome to our virtual field trip. Today we are going to visit the home and studio of Gary and Corinne Melcher. Gary Melcher was an internationally known artist and his wife Corinne was also an artist. On their property, they had built their own home and a studio. They also had horse stables, um, cows, chickens, very nice gardens, and many other things to do on the property. It's located right off the Rappahannock River in Fredericksburg, Virginia. And also throughout the property, you can see sculptures that Gary's father actually created. His father was also an artist. And let's see. within their home, they kept everything the same. So all of these furniture pieces and everything that you see throughout the home are their original furnishings. Corinne wanted everything to be kept as it was, as this was, um, this property and space was actually dedicated as a memorial for Gary Melcher by her, by his wife, Corinne. And it's been, actually been open since 1975. So within the home and gallery, there are 1,600 pieces of art that Gary actually created himself. They also have a lot of other collectible items from other artists, and they have letters and drawings and sketches, all kinds of collection items. And the amount of those actually brings the total to 7,000 pieces. So there's a lot to see within the home and studio. This piece was recently added to the Gary Melcher Home and Studio Museum, and it was actually made by Julius Melcher, Gary's father. So his father was a sculptor and a woodworker, and he learned these skills over in Paris. He even created some pieces for the Crystal Palace in London. This piece is titled Captain Jack, and when he was in America, he had a lot of requests to build life-size sculptures of Indians for tobacco shops. He also did a few of Uncle Sam. So here's one gallery view of one of the rooms you can see. And when Gary was 17, his father decided that he's going to study abroad. So he sent him overseas, but instead of going to Europe, like France and Paris or Italy, he decided to send Gary to Germany to learn because everyone was going to France and he wanted something different for his son. So when Gary was in Germany for four years, he studied, studied drawing and painting and he really enjoyed making scenes of the everyday life of rural scenes, landscapes, and um, some of his works also incorporate religious aspects. So one of the paintings in this room, um, the centered one on the farthest wall from us, is titled a Ceremony, and it's a wedding. And then to the left of that is a portrait of a woman. I'm not sure whose portrait that is, but when he was in America, he made many, many portraits. That's where he got most of his financing from. The portrait to the right is titled The China Cabinet. It's two women getting out um, plates and teapots and whatnot out of the China Cabinet. And then I'm not sure all the titles of these, but you can see some of them are very large in scale and some of them are smaller. He worked mostly in oil and mostly on canvas, I believe. So when Gary was going to Germany for school, he actually met Corinne on the boat, who was also an artist going to Paris to study. And Gary invited Corinne to come to a summer class and she went and they ended up falling in love. And then he followed her back to Paris where she was learning art. And the portrait on the right is actually a portrait of Miss Corinne Melcher. The portrait on the left is called The Open Door, 
and that is an original work by Gary. So he did many portraits, um, some were of higher statue, some were everyday, just casual portraits. Um, he even did Theodore Roosevelt. And Corinne's uncle had a high position of the Telfair Academy, which um, was big in the art world. So he got his foot in the door and that led to him eventually being requested and um, serving and advising and he became a chairman of the Smithsonian Institution and then he helped commission pieces to form the National Art Museum which is now known as the National Museum of American Art. He was also an active board member for the Corcoran Gallery in DC and the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts in Richmond. So Gary did beautiful landscapes. He really loved the location of his Belmont home in Fredericksburg. The painting to the left, the large painting, is titled The Unpretentious Garden. And as you can tell from all of these styles, he was a post-impressionist artist. And the paintings on the right, um, top right, is titled The Rainbow, and bottom right is titled From My Window which we can assume is from his home um, on the property. Here's some more works by Gary. Um, the center one is titled The Fencer and you can see that there's a glove, helmet, and fencing post knife thing. I'm not sure what to call it, but the little thing that you fence with, you can actually hold those and pose as the man in the portrait is doing. And those were actually the ones that he used when he was painting this in the late 1800s, I believe. There's a lot of other smaller paintings um, on the wall um, to view. And to the right, there is a larger painting that's actually called the Nativity. And it's by Gary Melcher. Um, his perception of the nativity with Jesus and Mary and Joseph. This is a different wall of the same room and the very large painting in the center is titled In Holland and it was created in 1880... I'm sorry. I'm not sure the exact date but it was late 1800s or early 1900s. And it's two women who we can assume are gathering water or perhaps doing yard work. So what do you think, like, how usually every day we just go in and we turn on our faucet, right? This lady is carrying two buckets from a device, I'm assuming that's a wooden post across her shoulders. Imagine getting water every day like that. That's hard work. And he decided to capture this and create a beautiful painting out of it. What are some everyday objects or tasks or chores you guys would paint? And what do you think the importance of it would be? Like looking back maybe a hundred years from now in the future, what do you what do you think would be different? How do you think things will change and make life easier to make it seem I don't know, to have a different value, I guess. Alright, and these Furniture pieces, they look similar to what we have in our classroom, right, for storing our artwork. So these um, are storing different pieces that Gary had, and in the glass cabinet there's different sketches and drawings and different stages of his process for creating art. To the left, the portrait of the man, that's actually a self-portrait that Gary Melcher did. 
You can also see his signature up on the top right corner. And then the larger photo to the right is called the choir man. He's teaching the children how to sing. But when you originally first look at this, it kind of looks like a teacher and students, which maybe Gary didn't realize he was doing, but he was a teacher, so we can assume he enjoyed teaching. And sometimes when we create art and we look back on our artwork, we kind of find details that reveal something about ourselves. Is there anyone that has an experience like this? Have you looked at your artwork and realized that it could be portrayed differently and it's something that's like near and dear to your heart? Yeah. All right, so for our activity while we're touring our field trip of the museum, I would like you to get some inspiration from Gary Melcher um, as he did love the scenery and landscape of his Belmont home. So if you could either choose um, a scene from one of your home windows or a window of like a place that you really enjoy and then go ahead and sketch that out and you can make it as detailed as you'd like but I would really like us to get a good sketch and then we're going to actually turn that into a painting. You can also take a picture of it with your phone if it's not at your home and it's a place or specific time that you really want to capture like certain lighting that's okay too. All right, and just to wrap things up, um, Gary Melcher has work in Germany, in Europe, in America, in many museums that we could actually drive. Some are an hour to two hours away and we could see some of his pieces. And he actually won the gold medal in 1932 from the American Academy of Arts and Letters. Unfortunately, he did pass away that year that he won the gold medal, but he did spend 16 years with his wife at the Fredericksburg Belmont home, and he really, really enjoyed um, creating artwork there. So hopefully we can get some inspiration and create some artwork that is inspired by Gary Melcher.